What's good, everybody? You Daniel Beat. You and take I'm your boy B. Hey man, today we're about to do a video from Nukes Top Five. In this video, it's five unsolved mysteries caught on tape. Yeah, man, unsolved mysteries. That that that's that's what's kind of crazy. If it's an unsolved mystery, but it was caught on tape, it's kind of solved, ain't it? Like you see somebody get killed. You, Catch him on tape. It's like, okay, that's the killer. You're like, you know what I mean? Now you just gotta find that killer, but you still see the killer. Like, see what I'm saying? I'm sure it depends on the circumstance. I know, but I was just giving an example to where it would make sense. But I don't know, man. We're about to hop on into it. You ready? Okay. Let's go. The top five mysterious unsolved cases. Jackie Sutton. In late October 2015, seasoned British journalist Jackie Sutton arrived at a Turkish airport to catch her connecting flight to Iraq, where she'd been working with the free speech organization IWPR. Hours later, mm. she was found dead in an airport restroom. Reportedly, Jackie Sutton had committed suicide, hanging herself Reportedly. using one of her own shoelaces. Now here's where things get even stranger. Earlier reports by the Turkish media stated that Jackie Sutton had become very upset after missing her flight to Iraq because she couldn't afford to purchase a new ticket. However, later reports revealed that Sutton could have easily paid for a new ticket. She was found carrying over 2,000 euros and two credit cards. Even more suspicious, another security camera clip taken shortly before Jackie Sutton's death shows her carrying what appears to be a shopping bag containing purchases made at the duty-free shop in the airport. Critics have argued that it seems highly unlikely that Jackie Sutton would suddenly decide to do a bit of shopping shortly before committing suicide. Right. So was Jackie Sutton's death a suicide or something more sinister? Let me know what you think in the comments below. They... She got killed, bro. Lars Matank. Lars Matank was a young German man who went on a holiday trip with friends to Varna, Bulgaria. While there, Matank was involved in a fight with some other tourists and suffered a ruptured eardrum. Because of the ear injury, Lars Matank was unable to fly, so he couldn't return to Germany with his friends. He rented a room in a hostel in a poor area of Varna, Bulgaria, determined to wait until his ear had healed enough so that he could fly back to Germany. However, that same night, Lars Matank called his mother and said that there was something strange about the hostel that he was staying in, and that she should cancel all of his credit cards. Even later that same night, Lars Matank left his hostel room in a panic, headed for the airport. He called his mother again, this time saying that four strange men were following him and that he was hiding. Two hours later, Lars Matank caught a cab and arrived at the Varna airport in the early morning hours. I would have stayed there. On airport security cameras, Lars can be seen entering the airport with his luggage. They're looking behind him too. But minutes later, he is seen running from the airport in a panic, leaving his luggage behind. Eyewitnesses say that Lars Matank ran to a barbed wire fence that surrounds the airport, climbed over the fence, and then disappeared into some nearby woods. To this day, Lars Matank has never been found. His family asked that anyone with any info as to his current location contact them via their website or Facebook page. Brian Schaefer. One of the strangest disappearances on record is that of Brian Schaefer, an Ohio State medical student. On March 31st, 2006, Brian Schaefer decided to go out for a night on the town with some of his college friends. They met at the Ugly Tuna Saluna, an upstairs bar at Ohio State's South Campus. Brian can be seen arriving at the bar with his two friends. They're smiling and laughing as they exit the escalator to the second floor bar. Around 10 p.m., Brian called his longtime girlfriend, with whom he had planned a spring break getaway to Miami a few days later. Brian told her that he loved her and would see her soon. Brian's girlfriend said that the call was nothing out of the ordinary. Later, Brian Schaefer is seen again on security camera near the escalators, talking to two girls. He seems to say goodbye and then heads back into the bar. Brian Schaefer was never seen again. Security cameras covering the only exits of the Ugly Tuna Saluna bar do not show Brian Schaefer ever leaving. The only possible other exit would have been through an area of the bar that was under heavy construction at the time and closed off to the public. However, even if Schaefer had left through the construction area, 
There are multiple other security cameras in the bar's that vicinity. Have picked up on None where... of these cameras picked up footage of Brian Schaefer ever leaving the bar. It's almost as if Brian Schaefer disappeared into thin air in the middle of a crowded bar. Alan Jill. On the evening of February 23rd, 2014, Alan Jill took a strange trip through Cornwall, England. Captured by surveillance cameras, Jill spent his evening wandering the streets of several different cities for hours. He was seen in Wadebridge, then traveled by bus to Truro, then on to Newquay, then back to Perrinporth. No one knows why no Alan Jill took this strange went, trip okay. or what he was doing wandering the streets of four different cities all night. The next morning, the dead body of Alan Jill was found washed up on the shore of Perrinporth Beach. Damn. Jill was naked except for one sock and one shoe. But the story gets even stranger. Alan Jill's other sock was found wadded up inside his mouth, wrapped in the cord of a pair of earbud-type headphones. Near his body was a black jacket containing a wallet with 95 British pounds, but his bank cards, credit cards, and ID were missing. However, the wallet contained a single bizarre picture, Alan Jill as a child. Even stranger, the jacket the wallet was found in was not the one that Alan Jill had been wearing on the night of his death. Okay, that is Initially, true. Alan Jill's death was thought to just be a very strange suicide. However, an autopsy revealed multiple unexplained injuries to Alan Jill's right hand, chest, and head. Police ruled the death as suspicious. The case still remains unsolved, and no one knows exactly what happened to Alan Jill. Uh -oh, uh oh, family? The family, the Jameson Bert. family. One of the most bizarre disappearances in recent history is that of the Jameson family of Eufaula, Oklahoma. Pastor Gary Brandon claims that the Jamesons told him that their home was haunted by angry spirits. The Jamesons said that they had made contact with the spirits of a dead family in their house. Don't do and that. Their six year old daughter Madison often talked to the ghost family's child. The Jamesons said that two of the ghosts were called Emily and Michael and that one of the apparitions had wings like an angel. Allegedly fearing for the safety of his family, Bobby Jamison had asked Pastor Brandon if there were quote-unquote special bullets that he could use to fight off the intruding spirits. Pastor Brandon also said that Jamison mentioned that he had obtained a quote-unquote satanic Bible in order to attempt to ward off the ghostly beings. On October 8, 2009, the Jamison family loaded their pickup truck for a trip. It can be seen on their own front yard security camera moving things from their house to their truck. Bizarrely, the family seems to be in some sort of daze or trance-like state, making dozens of trips back and forth from the house to the truck, but never talking to each other once. After loading the truck, the Jamisons pulled out of the driveway and were never seen alive again. Eight days later, the Jamisons pickup truck was found by the side of the road. Locked inside the truck were the Jamisons wallets and IDs, their cell phones, and $32,000 cash. Also locked inside the truck was the family's small dog, which was nearly dead from starvation. A massive statewide search was launched for the family over the next eight months, but nothing was found. Multiple theories were circulated. One that Bobby and Cheryl and Jameson had been meth users and had been involved in a meth deal gone bad. This theory would also explain their trance-like state in the final video of the family. However, absolutely no evidence of drug use was found when police searched the Jamison family home. Four years after the Jamison family's disappearance, deer hunters stumbled across some skeletal remains in a remote area of the Eufaula Mountains, less than three miles from where the Jamison's truck had been found. The bodies were forensically identified as the remains of the Jamison family. Mm. However, the bodies were so badly decomposed that no cause of death could be determined. The reason for the Jamison family's strange behavior and the cause of their death remains a mystery to this day. Oh my gosh. That is really creepy and strange. And then they had just the... If somebody kidnapped them, wouldn't they take their money? They left $32,000 in cash just in the car? I have no idea what happened. You could say a lot of different things, yeah? You could say they got possessed and then went off and killed themselves. You could say somebody killed them. Who knows what happened to the Jameson family? Dang, that's crazy. They just left the dog in the car. He almost died. At least they saved him. But this is really sad. 
and crazy. Let us know what y'all think happened with any of these cases. Uh, crazy. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.